Today we will be modeling decimals, modeling decimals. A decimal is a number that has a digit in the tens place, hundreds place, thousands place, and or beyond. So right here, we have an example of a decimal. Notice how it has numbers behind the decimal point. Here's our decimal point right there. And we have a number in the, in the hundreds place, a number in the thousands place, and we have a zero to hold that place value for the tens place. This is an example of a decimal. Problem one, let's say that this square represents one whole, this square right here. What fraction or decimal is shown by the shaded parts of the square? Let's see, our square is broken up into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 pieces to make that whole. There are 10 pieces to make that whole square. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4 of those pieces are shaded in. So we have 4 tenths. Decimals are represented in the same way and always use a base of tens. So we have tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, and so forth. So here, if I have my whole out of 10, we have 10 pieces to make the whole, and I have four of those tenths to make the whole, I'm going to put a four in the tens place. Notice how we would read this, four tenths, the same as we would read this des this fraction, four tenths. I'm looking at my model, I don't have any whole numbers or numbers in the ones place, no ones there. So my four tenths is equal to four tenths. We read decimals and fractions that have denominators of 10, 100, 1,000, and so forth the same way. We can also write in this same example, hundreds. How many full hundreds do we have shaded in? We have no full hundreds shaded in. This decimal is equal or equivalent to this one. The only difference in the model would maybe be that I would shade, I would cut it up into more pieces and I'd still have 40 hundredths shaded in but that 40 hundredths hopefully we remember reduces or simplifies to be 4 tenths. So typically you would see this model shown as four tenths. Let's go ahead and create a model for two tenths. Again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces that make up the whole. So that means we definitely can use tenths, and we should have two of those pieces shaded. So here's one tenth, here's our two tenths, two tenths. Problem three, let's say that this square represents one whole. What fraction or decimal is shown by the shaded parts of the square? Well, I know that this square has been broken up into a hundred little squares. And I have three of those hundred little squares shaded in. So I have three hundredths, three hundredths. Well, this tells me what decimal I could have. Three hundredths, three hundredths. These are going to be equal, equal values. We can model hundredths again when I have a hundred pieces. How many full tenths do I have? I don't have any full tenths. I don't have any holes or ones, so three tenths, or I'm sorry, three hundredths is equal to three hundredths. 
problem number four, here I have five hundredths, so I can use a model that's broken up into a hundred pieces. And I'm going to color in one, two, three, four, five of those hundredths. Five hundredths. Let's look at another example. Let's say that this box represents one whole. So this box here represents one whole. What fraction or decimal is shown by the shaded parts of the box? Well, this box happens to have a thousand little cubes to make it. And of those, one, two, three, four, we have four of those thousand shaded in. So we have four thousandths, four thousandths. Well, four thousandths, again, if I put a four here, that means I have four of the thousandth pieces shaded in. I don't have any hundredths or tenths or ones in this example. So four thousandths is equal to four thousandths. This is the decimal that I would use to represent this model. Problem six, plot where the decimal seven tenths would go. Well, let's see how many pieces are whole going from zero to one whole is broken up into. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's broken up into ten pieces, which means I can use tenths. So this will represent one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, and nine tenths. Notice how we broke it up the same way we would have broken up this number line with fractions. The same kind of idea, because decimals are really part of a whole, just like a fraction is. So I'm going to plot that seven tenths right here on the seven tenths, right there. Go to problem seven. Where do you think we would plot 65 hundredths and why? We would plot 65 hundredths blank because blank. Let's see if we can figure this out. Let's see, I'm going to draw something down here to mimic these tables here. So we have our decimal point, we have our tens place, we have our hundreds place, and here's our 65 hundredths. Well, I see I have a six in the tens place, but I have another number as well. So let's go ahead and write six tenths, six tenths. Well, six tenths is the same thing as sixty hundredths. Six tenths is the same as sixty hundredths. I see that sixty five hundredths is more than sixty hundredths. If I look here, I can go to the next tenth, which would be seven tenths, and I can expand it out a little bit so we have zero hundredths, but the same value of seventy hundredths. Where would the 65 hundredths go? Right in between. It might be easy to see if we have our fractions written. 60 hundredths, 70 hundredths, 65 hundredths would go right between those two. So when I plot it, I'm going to plot it between my 6 tenths and my 7 tenths. We would plot 65 hundredths between 6 tenths and 7 tenths because 65 hundredths is between 60 hundredths and 70 hundredths. Now, because we're looking at some equivalencies in this lesson as well, let's talk about some common misunderstandings. So 
sometimes people think that one fourth is going to equal whoops sometimes people think that one fourth is going to equal one and four tenths well, let's think about that this is a whole a whole one this does not have any holes this is four tenths those two are not equal one and four tenths is equal to one and four tenths. This four tenths equals four tenths. One fourth is actually equal to twenty-five hundredths. If you think about money, a fourth of a dollar is twenty-five cents. We would put that decimal point there. So please don't get confused. So again, when we're modeling decimals, we look at how many pieces make up the whole. Are there 10 pieces that make up the whole and each piece would be a 10th? Are there 100 pieces that make up a whole and each piece would be a 100th? Are there 1,000 pieces that make up the whole and each piece would be a 1,000th? We must think about that when we're modeling. 